Hello everyone, this is Dr. Anuradha Udumudi, Founder Director of Genetech. In this video, let us try to understand what is a genetic disorder or a genetic condition. A genetic disorder or a genetic condition arises when there is a change or variation in our genetic material. And what is our genetic material? The genetic material is present in every single cell of our body and I will explain it a little further later. But these genetic disorders generally are believed to be rare genetic conditions, but these are not as rare as we think. Um, for example, as of today, there are about 300 to 400 million people who are affected with genetic disorders or rare disorders worldwide. So, it is a very important to understand how this genetic disorder or a condition arises. This change or variation in a genetic con material of our cell results in a genetic disorder, but the severity of the condition this how severe the genetic disorder is depends upon the size of the genetic material that is involved in this change. For example, um, uh, we all know that in every cell we have 46 chromosomes, 46 chromosomes are not each chromosome is nothing but condensed form of DNA uh, in which there are thousands and thousands of genes which do our bodily functions. Now, this condensed form of DNA which is a chromosome, we have 46 of them in a each cell and 23 come from mother and 23 come from father and it makes 20, 46 chromosomes in our body. Now, when there is a change which is very big change in the genetic material that is when a whole chromosome is lost or is added or an extra chromosome it results in an abnormality which is very very severe. Such abnormalities are called aneuploidies where a whole chromosome is lost or a whole chromosome is added or gained and it results usually in uh, the pregnancy loss because such a big change in, uh, in genetic material is usually not viable with life and therefore it results in a pregnancy loss. Rarely such genetic disorders can also result in live birth. For example, there are some disorders uh, you might have heard about Down syndrome, Turner syndrome. These are some common disorders where the number of chromosome is either extra or less. In Down syndrome, we have one extra chromosome which is 21st chromosome and these children usually have mental retardation and other cardiac problems and uh, developmental problems and uh, uh, Turner syndrome where you actually have one chromosome less. For example, uh, instead of having two X chromosomes, if the female has only one X chromosome, it results in Turner syndrome which uh, the outcome of which is uh, developmental problems where the um, girl will not be able to mature on time, her uterus is small and her height is short etc. Uh, so, whenever there is a whole chromosome missing or a whole chromosome extra, it results in a very severe form and therefore, it will be a pregnancy loss usually. And when such thing happens, obstetricians or gynecologists send fetal material, the products of conception what we call or the aborted tissue to a genetic laboratory to see if the pregnancy loss was because of such a large change or chromosomal change that is present in the fetal material so that we can counsel the patients accordingly. Now, sometimes this uh, loss or gain of whole chromosome need not be the whole chromosome, a small part of the chromosome could be missing or it could be duplicated. Now, these are smaller changes and therefore, they might result in uh, pregnancy loss or they might also result in um, developmental problems in children. Children may be born, but they may have conditions such as autism, mental retardation and in some conditions, you know certain organ related uh, defects. Now, depending on how, what is this portion of the chromosome that is deleted or duplicated, and what are the genes that are present on this deleted or duplicated region, the genetic abnormality presents itself. 
and uh, therefore uh, usually checking these chromosomes either the whole chromosome loss or gain or a partial part of the chromosome loss or gain is done by certain tests called cytomicroarray. When children are born with certain conditions there are tests that are recommended by pediatricians or obstetricians to be able to identify such genetic disorders. Further, so there are some genetic disorders, in fact many genetic disorders which are not as gross as we have discussed because these gross big changes usually as I have told you result in pregnancy loss. But then if the change of uh, in a genetic material occurs at a single gene level as I have told you uh, initially every chromosome has DNA and on those DNA on that DNA there are thousands and thousands of genes. So, if there is a change in one gene what happens is that that particular gene becomes non-functional or over functional or under functional depending on what kind of change that gene has undergone and in that change what happens is that that particular gene is unable to produce a particular protein and therefore a specific problem arises. For example, if there is a mutation which we call the change in this genetic material genetic code at single gene level is usually called as mutation or a variation. When this mutation occurs on a gene for example called dystrophin gene, this is where there is a protein called dystrophin protein and that dystrophin protein get disrupted and it results in a muscular dystrophy condition called Duchenne muscular dystrophy condition. If there is a change on a gene called let us say beta globin gene, the beta globin gene is responsible for uh, production of hemoglobin and because there is a mutation on beta globin gene production of hemoglobin is disrupted and it results in a condition called thalassemia. Now these children with thalassemia require frequent blood transfusions for survival and now remember the way initially what I have said is that the whole chromosome is missing which means a lot of genes are missing and therefore even the pregnancy does not survive. But in these conditions where the changes are very very small which are called single gene disorders a particular gene is affected and therefore the child may survive but may present abnormalities depending on which gene is affected. For example, there can be a gene called OCA gene which may have mutation and it will result in a condition called albinism where melanin pigment is not produced on uh, in the skin and these individuals have pale skin, pale uh, hair color uh, and red uh, eyeballs and these are the people are very highly susceptible to cancers and cannot uh, do well in sunlight and things like that. So, these are single gene disorders where only a specific gene is affected and a condition or the outcome depends on what is the function of that gene. So, these are different types of genetic disorders that one can see. Now, each genetic disorder has a different recurrence risk that is associated with it. Some disorders uh, may have 25 percent recurrence risk where if the first pregnancy ha had a baby with, with a genetic disorder in subsequent pregnancy you may see 25 percent risk associated. Some disorders may have 50 percent risk and some genetic disorders may have no risk at all. The, it may be zero recurrence risk. So, please remember that genetic disorders need not be always hereditary in nature. A genetic disorder is where there is a change in the genetic material and this change in the genetic material can either come from one parent or both the parents or it can occur as an accidental event or a new event in the baby also. So, to understand whether this genetic disorder will happen again in subsequent pregnancies or not what we need is a genetic counseling session. So, we need to look at the family history um, uh, and then understand the risks. So, it would be good to approach a reproductive genomics expert, get a genetic counseling done, understand the risks that are involved for future pregnancies, 
understand the options that are available for future pregnancies. For example, many of these genetic disorders can be prevented by doing what is called prenatal diagnosis. So, in next in a pregnancy we do tests where uh, in the first few months of pregnancy we will be able to communicate to the family whether the baby inside the womb is affected or not and then they can take a informed decision about continuing the pregnancy and in some cases uh, even if the baby is affected it can be managed and therefore those important decisions also have to be taken. Further we also generally uh, can provide uh, testing on embryos. The embryo that is devoid of the genetic disorder can be transferred into the womb. So, there are several options that are available for patients who have elevated risk in subsequent pregnancies and therefore by undergoing a genetic counseling session understanding all these issues how what is the genetic disorder how big is it and will it happen again in the family or not and then take informed decisions and plan your healthy family.